off. We're ready. Just tell me when you're ready. Good to go. Okay. So basically, this is my wax, okay? Okay. Yeah. And this is my modelling material. And these are going to end up in bronze. Right. So they'll be bronze heads. And I've got a foundry back at the... Um, I come from East Anglia. And I've got a foundry. And so these will end up being cast in the foundry and end up maybe being used, as I say, in the final object. So the wax is quite important. So I'm just going to look at you, and as, we're, as I'm looking at you, I'm going to walk around you and everything, yeah. and work you out. In fact, I did, a, I did a kind of a, a head to begin with, and it's not that dissimilar, actually. I'm quite happy. Yeah. I've got a very common head, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's your name, Tom? Tom. Foy. F Tom Foy. F O Y. Y. And have you always come from Yorkshire, or are you? I was born in uh, Castleford in Yorkshire. Yeah. Right. But from uh, an Irish mother and a Scottish father. Oh crikey! So. And are they? Had they been down? No. Uh, moved down specially to be they, around here. They lived in Scotland, and the father was a miner. He moved down to work in coal mines in. Castleford, and I was the first one to be born in, in England. Yeah. Oh really? How many of you were there? Six in total, one before me born in Scotland, and then the rest of us are all uh, English, Yorkshire. Right. Yeah. So, how, so what date was it that you came down? Uh, they must have come down 1954, something like that. Right. I was born in 1956, so I was the first one born in England, as I said. Uh, and so they were working, your dad was working in the mine? My dad worked at, came to work at Whitwood Colliery near Castleford. And when that closed, he moved to Kellingley Colliery, which is just recently closed, as yeah. you know. Yeah. We're in. <laughs> we're in. A damn oh, fine oh, head yeah. it is too. Well, thank you ever so much. much. Yeah. yeah. Colleen just rang me and she was like, is he there? And I went, uh, I'll just go check. Yeah, well, so yeah. Does, does, does Dad want any beers? Uh, I've got some at home. <laughs> no, I've, uh, they've been here. She, she's going to get you some more from Asda. Oh, no, no. Uh, that's very good of her. No, no uh, I've got some. There's some in the back garden there. I'll tell her he's got none, so she's Yeah, tell her I've got some. Yeah, make, make her work for it, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll be up soon, Lawrence. Oh. Yeah, cheers. So your dad was in the pit, and you were. My dad were was in the pit, yeah. So uh, I left school, and uh, I didn't go in the pit straight away. I got another job that I didn't really like in a bit of an office environment, but I couldn't stand it. So I went to the pit then as an apprentice. And I started work at Glass Island Pit in Castleford. Stayed, did my apprenticeship there as an electrician. Uh, then. After about five years there, I decided to move, and I moved to Doncaster and started at Brodsworth Pit. Right. And I stayed there till Brodsworth shut in 1990. How many years was that then in total? In total, uh, about 18 years in total. Okay. A year off for the strike, and uh, yeah, so, yeah, it was 18 years. Yeah. yeah. And you retired because you wanted to retire, or you were just because the pit closed? I didn't closed? retire, I was uh, made redundant. Yeah. Yeah. With the pit closed, I could have moved to uh, other pits, but I decided to try something different. So, so I did, I, and uh, I got a job uh, working for this company I work for now, Saki Combustion. Oh. And I've, worked with, I've been with them ever since. Something different, but... Uh, yeah, it's quite good. Because yeah. I'm an electrician, I, I work with engineering, controls, electrical, and combustion. And uh, yeah, here I am, still working for them. Yeah. So you're an electrician down, down the. Yeah, I'm underground, I was an electrician. I always worked underground. Uh, was that, so that faces. was kind of a, what do you call it? Not a solitary job in a sense, you were. Part of a team or a crew or a you are part of the face team. Yeah, you, each face team would have so many doing one thing, so many do another. They usually have one electrician and then usually two fitters. They're usually tied in working 
whatever was happening or I, I would just see to all the electrical stuff on the face. So does that mean you were permanently busy or were you waiting for a disaster all the time? Oh no. Waiting there for was, a breakdown? Uh, yeah, it would be nice to think you were but in reality it was you always having to advance all the cables and equipment as, as the face moved forwards, everything had to be moved forwards with it. And then you had like uh, planned preventative maintenance, so you were given a list of duties to check every day, you had to sign for and tick off and things like this. So mm. yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, it was, <laughs> ideally, yeah, it'd be nice just to sit there, just wait, it's just broke. Wait for a fuse it. to go. Yeah, but in between all that, you know, if there was a breakdown, then that took uh, priority. You'd go to that and either try and get it to work or get something that would make it work. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite busy. I, uh, I always enjoyed it, to be honest. I quite liked working down the pit. If Brodsworth had never shut, I might still have been there yeah. for all I know, you know. So that's quite a tough time, isn't it, really? But working down the, the pit. Clo the closing of it in there. Yeah, the closing of it, yeah. It's uh, sort of a mixed bag for me, really. Yeah. Uh, like I say, I, didn't, I was happy working there. I was quite content to work there would have probably carried on. But then I got this job and uh, yeah, it opened up all new things, really. Like I've travelled all around the world with this job. Really? And, you know, everywhere, yeah. Seen some weird and wonderful countries, weird and wonderful places yeah, you wouldn't normally see, you know. Crikey. What, Middle East type things, or? Uh, I've been, yeah, all around Europe. Uh, well, all around Europe, uh, down into the Middle East, Israel, Jordan, Saudi. Good Lord. Egypt, uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, down into Africa. So is that installing? Installing, commissioning, repairing. Usually when you're overseas, it's commissioning, yeah. What is it you're commissioning? What is the equipment? Uh, now it's, uh, it's combustion equipment. It's uh, Burning gas or oil, in mainly in steam boilers. Oh. You know, people still lose a lot of steam. If you see a chimney well, around here, they, there's usually a, a boiler underneath it. Uh, most of the work we do is for things like chemical plants, breweries, in this country, hospitals. Any any factory that needs a heat process uh, mm. will use usually use steam. Still, you know, people get a bit of a shock because they think steam's a you know an yeah. ancient thing, but no, it's still still used. Blimey. So yeah, so uh, travel the world with this company and yeah, which I would never have done if obviously yeah. but uh, if the pits that have stayed open and have stayed at the pits. Fantastic, isn't it? It's all right. Yeah, it can be all right. Sometimes it's not so nice. You, know, you go to some. Not so nice countries. Some so how often would you? How long would you be away for doing these jobs? Uh, usually no more than four weeks, five weeks. I think, I think five weeks the longest spell I was away. You can usually complete the job in two weeks, maybe three weeks. Sometimes just a few days. Sometimes I work on ships as well. Sometimes so you, you might just a few days on a ship and then get off again and fly back again. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was exciting to start with, but slowly over the years it, became, it becomes less of a thrill and more of a chore, you know. It's, it sounds good, you know, <laughs> travelling all around the world, but the reality is you end up, you just live in a hotel, working on a boiler, on a, on a burner, and then back to the hotel again, you know, and then flying home again, so. Yeah, I've, I've you know, probably started to back off a bit from it all now. I don't. I'm a bit more choosy where I want to go or where I do yeah. go. Yeah. And you got to, you can you can you can dictate, can you? Yeah, you don't have to go overseas. There's plenty of guys that've never done it. So. Yeah, they're quite excited. So it's quite a big company. There's obviously those. Are oh, yeah, it's a well, it's a German company, but it's worldwide. It's uh, they've got places all over the world. I think they've got about a thousand employees in total Gee. all around the world. But 
There's about 70 of us here in the UK. And they were in the area at the time of the, the stuff they were operating here already, or did they move in when they knew? Oh, no, they, they've been here since the uh, 60s. Right. Yeah, uh, they opened a place here down in Portsmouth, 1961 or 60 or something like this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they've been, they've been going all right since then. You get to, you know, like I say, you get to see all sorts of different places that you would not normally see under conditions where you would not normally see them, you know. Yeah. Instead, of, you're not going as a tourist, you're going to work yeah. with people. Yeah, so, you see, you get a better view on how other people live. Some good, some bad. Yeah. You're doing well. Is it? How's I'm it going? A, How's I'm it a, going? A, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know. How are you feeling about it all? I feel the heat of those lights. I know, yeah. <laughs> It's a bit of a shock, this to you. That's for me, thank you. Cappuccino and yes, you cut the socks, thank you. Americano. Well, it's great, I can see a skull. You've yeah. got a good head, actually. Well, I've you got no hair, so that yeah, helps, perfect. I suppose, yeah. And there's a good bone structure in there, sir. <laughs> Is there? There's a good bone structure. Great. Right. Thank you very much. No thank you for keeping me company. No worries. Thanks for the coffee. Uh, are you going around any other areas or just Doncaster? Just Doncaster. It's a commission for Doncaster. Oh, okay. And um, it's to celebrate in mining and stuff. And um, as usual, when you come into this, you, you suddenly realise there's a much bigger... There's like 16 pits surrounding Doncaster and all of those people have their own unique... <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, ...stories uh, to tell and cultures as well. I remember seeing on the news at the time of the miners' strike, there was... 17,000 working miners lived yeah. in Doncaster Borough, yeah, or Metropolitan District. Yeah, so I, when I first came, I started to, I, I went round to all the, I suppose you call them the miners' unions and clubs, oh, yeah. and did a talk oh, right. to sort of promote, well, I suppose tell people what I was doing, what, I pro what the, uh, the project was. And um, just slowly, I mean, sometimes no one turned up, <laughs> Sometimes I had 20 of your people. Yeah. But slowly, and I just picked up more and more kind of information and, and clues, and people would start to bring me things. And the yeah, idea was just to slowly just get to know the world and what and the, and the whole culture really. You didn't know Doncaster before this? No, I never been. Oh, right. So, um, you know, I was a sculptor that applied to a kind of an advert, really. Yeah. And, um, but I've actually fallen in love with the whole process, you know, so it's been very, very interesting. And, and really, my, to get to know people like this, you know, this is really weird. This is a very strange thing to be doing. You know. Well, yeah, it's not, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not bizarre. something I do every day. Yeah, exactly, so you, it's vulnerable. You, know, you put yourself into a position where you have to talk and you have to make conversation, you have to yeah, yeah. get to know each other for a period. And stuff happens, and you learn much more. At the same time, is learning about your face, and so it's a very interesting cocktail <laughs> for a film, you know. And I had loads of ideas for um, the project. You know, you, everyone, when you would do a mining monument, or whatever, people are expecting a bloke with a pickaxe on his shoulder, yeah, yeah, a mining yeah. cap, and stuff. And um, when you start to look into it, you know, that's really the, the, what everyone's done. And I don't want to make something that's already been done so I had loads of ideas and I've been doing talks every time I come down with all my ideas and proposals as it were and um, at the same time as doing this yeah. and this has kind of taken over these heads there's another I did six last month there's going to be another six this year this month and the energy that's around them and the stories that are told are becoming far more important than the idea of a big sculpture so I begin to think that these bronze heads will start to form the actual monument in itself. Oh. So, and uh, you're doing women from yeah, yeah. mining communities. We as did well. uh, Joan Hart, pit nurse. Okay. Yeah. We did well, her. She, do you know which pit she was at? She was at Hatfield. Hatfield. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And she's written a big book. She's a lovely book that's been very successful. Yeah. And I've got um, yes, I've got the strike baby, a number girl who was a strike baby. I've got grandchildren of miners. You know, I'm trying to get as many. Yeah. Aspects of uh, the types. 
Well, my wife's got a story to tell. Yeah? <coughs> well, she, she? <laughs> uh, she was, uh, she met me, of course, and she was uh, a nurse when I met her. All right. But, but uh, she never done any formal school qualifications, and I think it always bugged her a bit. And uh, I think it was around the time, I think it was after the miners' strike. Yeah, it was after the miners' strike, we finished that. I don't know what I don't, that was spurred her on or what, but she decided she, she came. Oh, I wasn't here. It was when the the college was in the other side. She went and did her GCEs, which she didn't do at school. Flew through them, did her A levels, flew through them, and then went to Sheffield University, uh, mm. did a psychology degree, and then just oh, then she's recently well last about five or six years ago, did a master's degree in coaching psychology. Good Lord. And, uh, yeah, she works for herself now, doing... I can't, not, I can't go into details what she does, because it's a bit... Uh, I'm not quite sure, but it's through with coaching and training and psychology mm. and all the rest of it, yeah. Yeah, that, that, I think I don't know if that changed her after the strike. You know, that's, that's what brought that upon, or it helped it along. And uh, I think there's quite a few women did that mm. around, around here and around mining areas. I think we'll have to get her in then. Has she got a good head? <laughs> Smaller than mine, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's a good. <laughs> it's got a lot of brain, more brains in it than mine, oh, apparently. Good, yeah. Oh, no, definitely a good head. We need to get more women Yeah, in. she should be in, yeah. Brilliant. Well, there we are. We're booking you up. Well, you can do it through... Uh, what's Danny, name? Yeah. Danny, yeah. I know her dad was a... Uh, she was born in a pit house up at uh, Brodsworth, well, Woodlands as it's known. I don't know if yes. you know all the areas belonging to the I did a the talk pit. there, yeah. You did at Woodlands, yeah. yeah. Yep, Woodlands Club. Well, it, it, uh, she was born in Woodlands. Her dad was a miner. In fact, her dad was a, quite a high-flying guy in the anyway. He was a area agent for Doncaster. This is back in the 60s. Yeah, yeah all the... Uh, uncles and whatever were miners. Gosh. Like I said, my, I was a miner, my dad was a miner. One of my brothers was a miner also. So yeah, you don't, uh, don't realise how, you know, how deep you are in mining, no. I suppose, until you, you come out of it and look back. Yeah. yeah until you, you realise it's the end of an era. Well, the, yeah, yeah. It's, you were the last, as a sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, well, I suppose with Kellingly closing just last year, there was a few more fresh faces to go, but round here, most finished, you know. Yeah. I think, I don't know when the last Doncaster pitch show. I know Brodsworth was 1990. I know Bentley was still going after that, but I lose track now when, when they all closed. Yeah. I've been around Hatfield, when I'm got into that. Yeah. Had a look at the uh, old uh, gear. Really. Well, uh, of course, that was probably one of the last yeah, Doncaster ones, because it went, it, that went going, it kept going as a private venture, didn't it? Yeah. Did it? Yeah. Yeah, I think mean, that, that probably was the last uh, working pit around Doncaster. But, uh, yeah, it's a shame, really, but, yeah, one day we might open them up again. Yeah. I doubt it though, don't you? Well, you never know. <laughs> another generation, another life. Yeah, might be, yeah. I mean, they're saying the coal's not a clean fuel and all the rest, but they might find better ways of using it. Well, I think some people in the last sitting said, you know, there was a technology there to get it clean. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, they the, the put cleaners on the, on the, on the, on the power station. I know Ferry Bridge had a cleaner scrubber on it, and so did Drax, I think. And I think Edinburgh must have as well. So they can burn it clean if they want to. But, um, yeah. The will is not there to use it. I don't suppose you come across. Are you are you appreciative of the arts? Do you do much art stuff? Uh, I suppose, no, <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say something nice about that. In the deep that, end, but, in but the I, deep end. Yeah. I don't know anything about it, no, not really. <laughs> I'm not very artistic. I, uh, I, you know, I, I drew something, 
did that it look if it looked anything like it was supposed to be. No, I'm not too uh, artistic at all. Oh, I like some nice things that have been drawn, painted, sculpted, but uh, no, by no means a connoisseur. Uh, one of his sons and one of his daughters is a bit more artistic than me, yeah. But How many children have you got? Four, four of them. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably all a bit more artistic than me, but I know. Yeah, my son, he's... I mean, he actually is interested in art. Yeah, he likes art. Uh, he will go and visit an art gallery if he goes to yeah. a, some, on holiday somewhere or whatever. Whereas I might not, you know. I might go in if it was free. That, that's <laughs> the, that, that'd be my attitude. Good t shirt. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and it is, it is into music as well, so you know, I suppose it all, it's all art, isn't it? The yeah, end yeah. Of the day. I mean, he plays, creative industries. Yeah, he play, Yeah, he's a guitarist, so he likes to play guitar. Whereas I'm not very good at that either. How's it shaping up? You can't believe last one, have you? I've looked better. <laughs> <laughs> Just coming. We're moving on. Mm. What's this here? Was in wax? Yeah. yeah. It's Mod wax. Modeling wax. It's called modeling wax. Mm. Really. It's a sculptor's. It's suitable for bronze casting as well. So okay. It's lost wax casting that I use. So, uh, you put this in what? Sand or something? Or? No, it's in a plaster and grog mold. Yeah. Basically, the grog makes the plaster fire refractory, and um, and then it goes in the kiln. So you put runners and rise on it, pouring channels leading to a cup. Yeah. So you put a big runner in there, and it rises in there. The runner puts the bronze in, and the risers let the air out. Right. Yeah. And a pouring cup sits there. The whole thing's covered in plaster and grog. Goes in the kiln. All the wax melts out. Right. And then you just strap it with plaster so it's strong and you pour the bronze in and it fills up where the wax was and you end up with a bronze oh, sculpture. Right. Yeah, so the wax runs out and the yeah. bronze runs in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Lost wax crafting. Oh, very good. Which is a kind of a thousand year old technology. Mm. And the, what, the, the outer bit's made of what, grog? Yeah, the more, more grog and plaster, so it's like a fired ceramic mixed oh. with... Um, with plaster to make the so the plaster is like a the glue in a sense, yeah. And the grog is a fire resistant side of it, so it makes a mix that's suitable for kiln to actually binds to a sculpture as well. Mm, great. I'm just going to get you the cheeks level with it. You look down towards you, that's it. Hmm. Yeah, it's the first for me, this is a sculpture <laughs> Well, you're going to get a plaster of it. We give you a free plaster. Oh, do we? Oh, oh great. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have that mounted on the front gate then. Yeah. Hmm. So, how did you get into this? Um. Yours. Limited options in life. It's <laughs> <laughs> always a, a great incentive to do anything, yeah. isn't it? So it's basically, um, you know, I could draw a picture. Yeah. And um, I couldn't do maths, and yeah. I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, and I didn't really stay on to school or anything. And I ended up going to a local, in, I'm coming from East Anglia, Suffolk. Yeah, Suffolk, all right. And uh, I went to Lowestoft. College of Further Education, which is supposed to be like this place. Oh yeah. And uh, it's there that I kind of was turned on really to this business. Yeah. And I went on to do a degree, which is really beyond what I ever expected to be doing. Yeah, a bit like my wife then. Yeah. And um, and there in the degree in the sculpture department was this foundry, and it was casting bronze, and I couldn't believe. I thought, what? Yeah. Wax, plaster, mm. heat, metal, liquid. Everything was liquid at one point and hard the next and. Mix all together, oh, blimey, Riley, and I got completely involved in it, and it was um, 
before I knew it, I was making bronzes, which I thought was way out of my, you know, every, it's a bit like you tonight. It's like, what, how do I end up doing this? You know, oh my God, but it's fantastic. And then I realized that I got so into it and I was making my own bronzes at college, but it was all when you could have a run of a foundry and all that sort of stuff. And the minute you get out, you realize it was, if you want to do a head like this, you've got to find 500 quid to get someone to do it for you. So I can't do that, but I don't want to give up. So then I went and basically trained at the Royal College of Art yeah. in the foundry, in, the Royal, in a foundry, the cast sculptors, other, other work, other people's work. Other people's work, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. And trained as an apprentice, really. And um, so I suppose you've still got to get it right, the foundry part of it, yeah. you, so it could ruin yeah. it all. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So um, I trained in that, and then I went off to, I got scholarships to go to India and studied really old techniques. Oh, yeah. And a combination of all of the uh, learning allowed me to be able to make my own foundry when I got back to England. Oh, very good. So I could actually then charge someone else 500 quid for doing that. Yeah, that's that. Brilliant, yeah. And all I wanted to be was a sculptor. And it took the pressure off um, having to sell and make work that was commercially viable. You know, I didn't have to worry about making cats and dogs of people's pets and stuff. And you know, I could make my own work, which was more dangerous, you know, more challenging. And, uh, and I made simple rules, like if you basically have to build a load of moulds up and you get a kiln full of sculptures and then you go for it. And I made rules like I could never put a kiln on without one of my sculptures in it. All right. So I had to like always have one of my sculptures on the go in yeah. order to, and I became my worst client. Right. Like, everything else was done and it's about 12 o'clock at night you go, there's something missing. Mm -hmm. Oh, damn it, it's my own sculpture, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I'd have to turn around and, and cast one of my own, you know, and I never broke that rule. And eventually, yeah. my work started to sell. Oh, very good. And over the, over the years, I could do less and less casting for other people and more and more of my own stuff until, until I started to make a living out of my own work. Yeah, great. With jobs like this. And so, Where's your most famous sculpture that I don't want to go and see it then? There's no such thing in my world. I'm doing a... I'm soon to make a famous one. It's in Doncaster. All right, oh, this is beat then. Yeah. Okay. That's no, there's not... There's no big famous ones out and about. No? There's lots of... Because I've been working mainly in the... Um, I have a... For example, I have a gallery in London that sells my work. Yeah. And they sell it all around the world, really. So I've got a show in Australia in a, in a month's time. Oh, so we'll go out there and do that. And, uh, You're going out there? Yeah. Oh, whereabouts? Sydney. Sydney? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So it's been more of a private um, enterprise up yeah. to this point. Um, but it will start to change. But we're doing a 26 foot high figure, a big massive one, um, to go in East Anglia. So that will be quite a big thing to be seen from the road and all that sort of stuff. So. Like a angel of the yeah, that sort of thing. Angel of the east. Yeah, so that is going to be happening in 20, 2020. We've got that now. It's in it's in the foundry now. Yeah, and that's going to be a massive. It's like building a ship. It's a massive ship. <laughs> yeah. So um, all, all cast England, bronze. Yeah. Bronze. So that will be a well-known thing. Oh, people ask me if I'm famous. Oh, look out for it when I... Yeah, look out for it. So, You'll be addicted to my career after this. I knew him anyway, moulding my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He dragged it me in a, for a day's work. It was just a head moulder when I knew him. <laughs> yeah. well, he's come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause, uh, it just made me think that that Angel of the North, it's just, it's just reached a, some birthday, hasn't it? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it was on TV the other day, yeah. Oh, where, where, where I was when I was watching it, but yeah, I think it's, t would it be 20 years? It could be, yeah. Yeah, yeah probably higher than that, yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the, uh, the guy that put it up, well, built it or designed it, because it, 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 it's not something he can build on his own, it? it's no, no, made no. by a load of welders and yeah, yeah. Uh, iron, uh, steel workers, yeah. Yeah, because that had mixed reviews when it was going in, didn't it? it but did, now yeah. it seems to... Yeah, it seems to be pleased really to see it. Yeah, it is popular. Yeah. 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 And my daughter lives just quite close to it. Yeah, I oh always right. see it when we go up there. One of my daughters, yeah. So you see it every time you go up? Yeah, yeah, you can't miss it. Yeah, side of the A1 there. 
Do you like it? I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm, like I say, I'm not an arty sort of person, but yeah, I've been and had a look at it a few times. Just stood underneath it. It's quite. It straddles. The, it's a bit of engineering as well as. Yeah, that, isn't it? it's quite impressive. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know how long it'll, it's, it will last for. It will just rust away eventually because it's. Is it quite rusty now already? Or? I think it always was. It's because it's just raw steel, I think, isn't it? There's nothing on it. Is it iron? Cast iron? I don't think it is. Because cast iron will last longer, won't it? Yeah. I don't think it is because it was. you can't really weld cast iron, can you? It's, no. No, I think it's uh, just raw steel. Gosh. I could be wrong, I don't know, but that's how it looks. Because the, the, the natural colour of it is like rust. Yeah. Yeah. But that's on the side of the colliery, I think. Is it? I believe so, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, um, up in the northeast, uh, it's going to be soft. littered with coal mines. Yeah. yeah, it's more than down here probably. Uh, did you live near Lower Stuff then? Yeah, uh, yeah, not far after twenty miles. It's very countrified there. It's very um, yeah. I know. I've been uh, went to work on a ship off Lower Stuff once. Yeah. Quite nice. That's so you nice. Stayed, one of the exotic places you stayed in. One of the, yeah. Well, actually, no. I didn't, we didn't actually stay there. I, I just stayed long enough to park the car. I got a bag of fish and chips, and then I thought that it was on an oil tanker. I thought that the tanker would just be a few miles off and come back into Lower Stuff, stay in a hotel, and you know, a few beers and a nice time in Lower Stuff. But. The ship was 16 miles out, so oh it took us about two hours to get there, so I had to stay on the ship. Yeah, so that was my uh, brief visit to Lower Stuff. <laughs> yeah. But the fish and chips were nice. <laughs> it's getting quite, not Lower Stuff, but it's getting quite touristy around there now. But these towns and these off fishing villages. Yeah, has it got a beach, Lower Stuff? I can't remember. Yeah, it's got a very nice sandy one, it did, yeah. a very beautiful beach. But it was all washed away a couple of years ago. Yeah, but it's not yeah. It's not like on the tourist map, is it? No. How far yeah. is it from Yarmouth? Five miles. Oh, right. I suppose everybody will head there, won't they? Yeah. So you're doing some more tomorrow? Or is yeah, this got three more tomorrow. All to do with mining still? Yeah, this got a lot of, that's the one brief. They've got to be related to mining in some way. So all the stories will tally up. I suppose you could pick anybody in Doncaster yeah, really. They really. Could, they could some, like the father, their uncle or somebody would yeah. have worked in a pit. Should have brought me a paycheck or something to... Yeah? Gonna model that on here, yeah, stick it on. Have you get kept loads of memorabilia? I've only got all I've got is uh, uh, your, your ID check. It's a brass check with your number mm. on. I had one before the strike, and then they issued new ones after the strike. I kept the first one, so I've got the two I had, uh, the two numbers. But uh, the, the riding checks, the two brass, you get two different shaped riding checks. You gave one as you got down. And mm gave the other as you came up, so they knew who was in and who was out. The pit, uh, they sell quite well now on the... Oh, on eBay? On eBay, yeah. <laughs> yeah they were everywhere, they were just thrown away at the time, you know. Yes. Yeah, you think on it. If I could have saved them, it would have been good. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought there's lots of people who got mining lamps. We've got one sat on our thing. I don't know if we got it Is there, it something so. you were proud to have been a part of? I mean, something like you were, or you were, was it just the job? Uh, I suppose, yeah, I was proud to be a part of it, yeah, but yeah. it's an unusual job, you know. Yeah. It's not, not, unless you've been down a coal mine and worked down it, you probably won't imagine what it's like, you know. Yeah. But yeah, until I was about nine or ten, I thought everybody worked in a coal mine. <laughs> I was born in a coal board house as well, you know. Everybody on the estate was, worked in a coal mine, so. Yeah. Did you, uh, were you one of the totally so sociable ones or did you, um, did you take full advantage of the, uh, the mining social life? The mining the social life? The community, life. as it were. I've heard lots uh, of tales. <laughs> uh, 
Well, we, when we first married, we lived in Woodlands in the mining village, I suppose. Yeah, I used to go to the... I didn't go to much of the clubs somewhere. I was at a local pub and have a drink there. And sometimes we'd go to the clubs. But then we moved out a bit of the Woodlands. We moved nearer towards Doncaster. And I suppose you, you lose touch of going out in the local village clubs, if you like. But, yeah, the people I used to go out for a drink with were all workmates, so yeah, I suppose. I went thinking back, yeah, I'd, I'd go back up to Woodlands for a drink, and everybody in that pub more or less worked at Brodsford Pit, so in that respect, I suppose it was, yeah, yeah but we, we didn't feel that at the time, you know. In fact, yeah, you'd go into the pub and speak about work all day, you know. Yeah. And then... Uh, my dear hell. <laughs> then go to work and speak about what you did <laughs> in the pub all day, yeah. 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 A bit mixed up. Which was the local? Was it the Where, where uh, When we lived in Woodlands, where Col the house Colleen was born in, we lived on Doncaster Lane. It was the, what's now the Broad Highway. Oh, well, yeah. It's, oh, it's the, yeah. the Highway Man now, I think it's yeah, called. Yeah. It used to be called the Broad be, Highway. Yeah. Yeah. That was the nearest one, but uh, if I was going for a drink with lads from work, I'd probably go up to the old Woodlands Hotel. You, you won't remember it, I bet, would you? Whereabouts was that one? On shop, right on shop fronts. It, was, uh, it burnt down, like everything in Doncaster. <laughs> if there's a problem, it will burn down eventually. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, the Woodlands Hotel, it was just known as the Swinger. Then they built a new one, which was also known as the Swinger, but that's shut now, that's something else, I don't know what it is now. Is that, is that at the top near the library, or the bottom near the working man's clubs? Uh, along that... Row of shops near the library, yeah, that same row. If, uh, going from the library, headed towards Doncaster, yeah. like, uh, oh, I think it's on the site of where they built the new one. You know where the snooker hall is? And, yeah, uh, yeah. Across that road, just there, and it's just there. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah we used to, I used to go in there a lot. Uh, I'd, odd times I'd go in some at clubs, but I weren't a big member of any at clubs, I suppose. Where are you from, anyway, originally? <laughs> you know, I, I was born in Wheatley Hills. Oh, you're from then, Doncaster then? Yeah, yeah and then yeah. we lived uh, Shaftesbury Avenue in Woodlands for Oh, did you? Years. Shaftesbury Avenue? Yeah. Uh, so where is that? Is that back of the shops there? Or? That, that one is... Or is it up on New Estate? So as you're driving up, where the Talier used to be on the right. Yeah, it's on the it's, New it's on Estate. It's on the left, yeah. so just behind... Garage, I don't know what it is anymore. Uh, there used to be the, the front there used to be the home coal place for, yeah. for delivering coal. On the front there, that garage there, you see. Yeah, so my local football pitch used to be the Oval. Yeah, the Oval, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Colleen's great auntie lives just the other side of them shops, yeah. yeah. She's got a lot of relatives up there, yeah. In fact, all the woodlands is splattered with. Their relatives, you know, not yeah. mine. Mine are from Castleford, like. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you got thrown in the deep end when Colleen answered the call to arms. <laughs> she said, "My dad's coming." <laughs> I know, but it's a bit odd. I was at a job at British Gypsum up at Sherburn, and I got this phone call and with these German people, and there's all sorts of problems going on. She says, "You've got to go and have your head sculptured." I thought this is some sort of <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> well, she says you're going to have your head sculptured in bronze. I thought, what are you talking about? I said, you can't just stick your head in a bottle of bronze and hope for the best. But I says, my first reaction was, uh, I ain't got time, I've, I'm busy here, you know. Uh, and then uh, she called out the trump card. She says, Mum says you've got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Lawrence, I said, I know, I know Colleen and I know your wife. Uh, yeah. I've seen, seen both quite a bit. I've probably seen him once or twice. I said, but if, if his wife's anything to go by, it uh, <laughs> should, uh, should be up for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen you down at the football thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's Daddy Hill then? Jaden. Jaden, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm the one that's tearing your house to pieces the other day. Probably. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, 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 that's him. Were you in yesterday? Witnessing no, him? I missed it yesterday, no. 
No, no, all I hear on uh, when Stanley's on the uh, Jay. Xbox Jay. thing. Jay, 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 Jay. We get the opposite that. We oh, get Stan, 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 Stan. 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 Uh, we didn't think about it actually until we're all stood there at football. Says, yeah, that Xbox. Says, it does my nut when he. And then Colin jumped in and went, Yeah, when all we hear is Jay. <laughs> I was like, It was only at that point that I thought, Oh, yeah, there's a flip side to this. Yeah. It's all I hear is Stan, Stan, <laughs> Stan. Yeah. They're all on the Xbox and the headsets, Lawrence. Really? And they're all, I mean, the six and seven year old, and they're all just talking to the mates. But because they're six and seven, they're not really fully in tune with technology. So. My favourite thing is they'll go, oh, don't go, don't go, don't go. But, and then you'll go up and you'll be like, what's wrong with Jake? Yeah, uh, yeah. We have all that. Or they can't join the same game. Yeah. Or Stan's car won't work. Or Jay. Yeah, Jay, killed, yeah. Jay wants a big ad. Stan, Stan's got a handy Yeah, uh, all that, yeah. And I'm driving down a Kia. How's that make you feel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they keep telling me how crap that Kia is, but what can you do? So, yeah, you, you know that these are going onto YouTube, don't you? I believe, yeah, I got to. So, so Stan, Stan might be able to sit there and watch you now, or Colin might. Oh, I better not say up. Oh, I'm a bit so. Have I said up oh, bad about him yet? So. Yeah, well. Apparently, um, to, Tom's wife is very. Apparently, Mom is very interested in the show. Yeah, she is. Colin's mum would love to do this. Yeah. Well, I think so. She was trying to stitch. She stitched it. Well, why not? Yeah. Well, she's a miner's daughter. Miner's yeah. wife. Okay. Yeah, came through the strike and, like I say, went to university after that. So there's a story to tell yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, it'd yeah. be a fitting monument to to a wonderful marriage. To, to, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're, on right. <laughs> We're on YouTube. We're on YouTube. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose we all played a part, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so why not, yeah, get them all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, I mean, if and when it all goes ahead and my head's stuck amongst all the others, where's it going to be put, this monument? It's going to be near, where is it, um, you know, because I don't know the names of the all these places. Um, do you know the old girls' grammar school? Up, um, up near top the, of Waterdale, yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah. where opposite, what's the. Yeah, what's the furniture shop? Ward. Ward. Ward, yeah, I know Ward. So, yeah. out the front of Ward's is a, a, a little triangular bit of land yeah. near the roundabout. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's what they're proposing. That's one of the sites. Nice. I think there's another site, isn't it, on the old NC. NCB site, is it a National Coal Board the site? National Coal Board site, yeah. so they're redeveloping all that area. Well, where Coal House was? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So there might be that as well. Well, it's not far from there anyway, is it really, Coal House? Uh, the problem is Lawrence keeps changing the design, so... That's <laughs> uh, well, we're just, I'm sure we can alter Doncaster to pick your design. <laughs> <laughs> I like this man. <laughs> See, the brilliant thing is about Tom is he's got absolutely no idea what's going on. He's arriving in the seat. Flying down the motorway from another job yeah. to, to have a man produce wax out of his mouth and to stick it to something yeah. that resembles his face, and he doesn't actually know what or why. I'm still in a blur, really. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not taking his glasses off. Yeah, I've taken my glasses. I can't even see who I'm talking to. Yeah. It's all, uh, yeah. So has Lawrence explained what it's all going to end up kind of. It, it's going on Crime Watch. That's all I know. <laughs> Yeah, he explained, yeah. Uh, we're all going to be famous. But he didn't say how much the fee was, you know, how much I'm getting for this. <laughs> he forgot to mention that. Eternity, what price is that, is it? Man? Yeah. Well, I prefer cash. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait until Stan finds out you're on YouTube. That, that, that's just going to be... <laughs> cash can't buy that. My granddad's on YouTube. That, that's what we're going into the playground tomorrow. Yeah, all right, I've got to... 
för en gudde. Varför? <laughs> Kunde vara en varsin super. Jag säger det sant. Ja. Right. How much time have we done? We're about 45 minutes in on the video. I don't know how long we'll start. It's starting to flesh you out now. Yeah. You're yeah. not just a skull, you know. Oh. There's a whole personality in there. I've been telling people that for years. <laughs> Nobody believes me. <laughs> I've got a couple of them I'm fine, I've had a, I've had a cappuccino there. Do you work here then? In this place? Well, loose sense. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a big thing around here actually, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. I'd heard those rumours that you were a big thing around here. No, well, I, do, I do work for a living, honestly. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so I teach on a photography course with Liz. Okay. Um, so this used to be our photography studio <laughs> until it was commandeered by a Suffolk, Suffolkonian, at least Anglian. Oh yeah. Um, Anglia, yeah. So yeah, we this is this is home five days a week. Oh, very nice. We captured Florence when he was in here for another day. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure he's fed before we leave. Yeah. Oh, and they feed you as well. They lock me up behind there. Yeah. <laughs> Bowl of water. Well, I've seen a lot of stuff. You probably, <laughs> probably like it, won't you? So, uh, are you not staying the night? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In re I mean, the region. Five star hotel. Oh, the region. Mm, very oh, nice. Yeah. That's all right, I suppose. I've never been there, just up there, obviously. All oh, right, so. Uh, he said this has been live streamed now. Yeah. yeah. Uh. So, my phone back. Uh, only fractionally, probably about 10 seconds then. So, all this area here, we've got like banks of TV screens. So yeah, I looked behind there earlier, yeah, I saw that bit. Um, yeah, I'll have to uh, wait for my phone to charge a little bit, and then I'll give Colleen a ring. And if you could look down just a oh, tad again, it's good. Down. Yeah. Get on and you can see, see Dad. <laughs> I love it. Colleen said I'd get a load of air stuck on as well. You can try Just that one. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Too late. It's too late for that. She told you a lot in that very brief phone she call. She did, yeah. She promised the world as usual. So it's basically she promised you a hair transplant. Yeah, and if you turn everything. Up. Eternity. Lots of money, fame, fortune. Oh, you're not being let down yet. No, you've you got aren't. a few of those in. Uh. <laughs> in under an hour as well, Lawrence. You're getting really good at this. Oh, dear. Yeah. But there's no guarantee it'll go on. On the sculpture? Yeah. Yeah. There well, is. If, it, if, if this idea goes ahead, okay. Right. There, I would love for this to be one of the ones. Uh, so is it Doncaster Council that's commissioning yes. it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's basically got to be a, um, a fundraising effort. Right. So they're, they're, the, they're the movers and the shakers, and um, they're the ones that have had the idea. The mayor was. Joan, what's her name? Was Rose Joan. Rose Joan. She's the one that's wanting to. Oh, very good. Do it. It's, uh, it's gathering momentum now, which is refreshing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, very good. The more the more people we speak to, the bigger it's becoming. So. Well. It's all positive. I've never um, I've never heard of it like obviously till about two hours ago. But maybe, I don't know, has it been in the local press or anything like that? Yeah. I've been on Drive Time Sheffield twice. Drive Time Sheffield, yeah. oh well. So that really is good for Doncaster. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in Sheffield knows about it. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, obviously I don't listen to the Drive Time uh, Sheffield. But Howie. I mean, Howie and me. Howie and me, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah. Were you on tracks as well? Tracks FM, yeah, that's Doncaster. I don't know. Too. Yeah. I don't know. But I don't listen to that either, but the I will do from now on. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case I am on, yeah. 
I don't even, I haven't read a local paper for, we don't, nobody buys papers anymore, do they? So, it's all know. on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. I say nobody, I don't, so. <laughs> You've got great deep set eyes. Good. Uh, uh, is that good? Oh, right. Well, in the sun, it'll, it'll really be dark in the sunlight. When oh. you know. Deep set eyes. It's like a bit like saying you've got lovely big feet, isn't it, or something like that. <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> so when you woke up this morning, did you think you'd be sat with a famous bronze sculptor? No. In Doncaster College. I'm He's already head. established I'm not famous. He said, what have you done that's famous? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Christ. He's, 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 he's doing a famous one soon, aren't you? I'm blum, a you know, big so one. Next year I'll do a famous one, don't yeah. worry. You'll know about me next year. Yeah. Well known in Lower Stoft, apparently, in yeah. all the right circles. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been to Lower Stoft, so yeah, that oh, next time I go I'll check you out. Yeah, yeah I'll have a word around, yeah. Have you seen this man? Yeah. It could be on, <laughs> when she said it, Colin, when she was coming off her, this is just another wind up, isn't it? There's going to be some. It does sound. Like a wind up. Like a wind up, yeah. yeah. I'm expecting a camera team to burst no. in the middle. <laughs> You've been framed, or no. candid camera. Definitely not. Definitely not, yeah. This, this is. Here's your 250 quid, you can go home now. Is that no. not going to happen then? No. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> He really is. It's hard to please, isn't it? But the thing is, if you know Colleen, his daughter, then, then there is a, a vast amount of potential, and especially with me involved as well, he, he probably is slightly edgy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I get where he's coming from now. Yeah. You just look at it. Which way? Two, two, two. Two, oh, all right. Yeah, up. yeah, it's not the thing you'd think, is it? I'll get up this morning, shall I go down, get my head waxed, yeah. I'll, well, not my head waxed, but my mould has been waxed, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Now that's it. When your head hits the pillar tonight, think, do you know what? There's another head in me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Upside down in a bar. Floating, floating in a bar. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. daughter's got pins now. She's got a ring dream come true. She takes stock of it and by the end of the evening, it's a headshot with all the wishes and the curses you could possibly want to put to it. Mm. You're going to provide them with a plaster as well, aren't you? Yeah, you're going to get a plaster head. Oh, yeah, he said that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, does it come painted or...? No, white. It'll be white. So you have to you paint, paint it yourself? It if you want. Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you can just spray it with that uh, fake tan or something like that, you know. Spruce well, it. Make, you make yourself... <laughs> oh, maybe <laughs> that as well, well if, we necess if necessary. I might add a bit of that on I'm it. not sure I want to give you one, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure the right amount of due respect is being paid. I used to have a lot of freckles when I was younger, so maybe well, I'll, do, well, I'll, do that, I'll stick some of them on it, yeah. yeah. That would be good. Uh, made of plaster, is it quite robust? Will it, yeah, yeah, it'll be robust. Will it Dental plaster. Grandkids knocking it about. Yeah, that's well. I'll do small rears then. Yeah, probably wise, yeah. You put sort of hooks on them, you can hang car keys on them and things like make, <laughs> make, <laughs> make it useful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for useful art, that's me. <laughs> Yeah, put a ring in my nose, I'll hang some car keys from that as well. Yeah. Seven years education, some of the best yes. colleges in the world. Yeah, this is what it boils down to. Can you put a bloody hook on your nose? <laughs> oh, years in Not India. yet. Yeah, two years in India. Oh, yeah. Problem is, you're better than a northern man. Yeah. A northern man. Look for a tie. <laughs> Brass head. I wouldn't recognise myself. I think it's safe to say this is the driest, <laughs> the driest sense of humour we've had so far. Oh, is it? Oh, dear. Just trying to think about anybody else from Woodlands. Well, I'm not from Woodlands originally. Keep looking forward, please. Sorry? Do you want to sit over here? So <laughs> <laughs> No, you're great. Well, Amy, it makes life a lot easier. I can't see you anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, but you had nobody else from Brodsworth Pit. 
Have you? Remember the name? Keith Alsop. Keith Alsop. Who's a character? Steve who? C Steve Jerose or Durose. Although he was a he was a electrician. Steve Fitter. Steve Durose. Durose, yeah. D U R O S E. Didn't ring a bell. I think Keith also might ring a bell. Was he ex union man or something like that? He was. Yeah, I think I remember him, yeah. Used to own, used to yeah, you had a pub here, that yeah. one uh, that now sells saddles or something like that. It's not Wildsmith, was it? Was it no, it was the, the old anchor or ship or something. It was it's called the Bay Horse, that one, Sarah. Maybe I've got it wrong, but is there a pub down, uh, an ex pub down yeah. here that sells like saddles yeah. and yeah, well, yeah. stuff for horses? Yeah. I can't it, remember. It, it used to be a pub. Yeah. A publican. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Like I say, I thought it was just a prank, really, up to... <laughs> I still still do. <laughs> Can't be true. Uh, so do you, do you keep in contact with many of ex your colleagues or ex-miners? Uh, not really. No, the, no, I would say I see odd ones now and again. You, you see a few... The, People branch away and move away, you know. Yeah. And then, like I said, I lived at Woodlands for a few years, then we moved to Scoresby. Uh, not Scoresby, Scorthorpe. And then we moved out of Doncaster, down to yeah. Blythe. And then back into Doncaster, where we live now. But, yeah. So, yeah, it was touch with all the next man. I bump into him now and again in normal meeting places like Asda or Morrison's, you know. Well, if you see it, let them know about it. Because we're trying to trying to get to as many people as we can. Yeah. So we're looking at our next one. We're going to do like a photo call, or a load of load more people associated with mine. And that's looking at March. We've got to shore up some dates, and then Lawrence is coming back. Yeah. Probably towards the end of March. Is that what we said, Lawrence? Yeah. Um, to do another uh, six. A load of heads. Heads. All right. Hopefully they'll know about it in the future. You know, they yeah. won't be surprised like you. Well, yeah, it'd be <laughs> they'll be prepared. What about the poor bloke that missed his chance for immortality? He's then? coming back. Oh, he's coming back, is he? Coming. Yeah, right. He had his leg amputated on the ground, so. Did he? Yeah. Oof. In what paper are they? Kellerby. Keller, what's that one? Uh, Big K. Big K. Is it Kellerby? Kellingly. Yeah, my dad worked there. Yeah. Well, what happened to him? I think obviously they've got it two, trapped. Two somewhere. tubs, is it? Yeah, they come between anything really. Ba batteries on the engines, wasn't it? Or something like that. Yeah. Uh, could, could be almost anything. Not a lot of space and miscalculation. Right? Yeah, he yeah, lost his leg. Mm. Used to be a common thing when I, when I first started at, I started at Glass Alton Pit in Castleford. And pit top was full of people. We, not full of them, but there were quite a few with one legged people. And, you know, the old 10 pints, please, but you only got six fingers to put up, you know, a lot of fingers missing. Yeah. Lawrence is trying to start a, a by project to, or, or an additional project on this. So he thinks that we don't spend enough time photographing or something, so he wants a project on missing fingers. Oh, yeah. So the, the majority of people that we've spoken to all speak of missing digits. Mm. Yeah, that was a common thing, wasn't it, in years ago, but then they started what getting people it? to wear gloves and I'm a bit less. Oh, well. they might be quite 
Oh, what, mining scars? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the old miners they used to have a lot of blue scars on them, yeah. yeah. Uh, such as my dad, he was covered in blue scars all over his arms and on his back. But uh, I think that got a bit less as time went on. There weren't as many things falling on you, you know, how they used to be. Yeah, a bit of a weird thing, isn't it? Scars, but there you go. Well, I thought, you know, it's quite, it's another version of portraits to do the thing, because when you think about it, there's a diet, they won't, they won't be here forever. <laughs> they're going to, you know, they're a dying kind of phenomena, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. There you go, if no um, fingers missing from mine. <laughs> You've got rather a lot of jobs. Well. You've got rather a lot of jobs, haven't you? <laughs> uh -huh. You're now an ambassador. An ambassador. <laughs> For the, for the sculpture. For the brass heads, yeah. For the little brass heads. Yeah. I thought they would be a bit bigger, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, I was a bit surprised you showed me the small one. I thought, I'm going to have shrunk them down like that. But you're not, obviously, you're not shrinking them down, which is a good thing. Not boiling them. No, no. Not boiling no. in there. Well, are this, are they, have you made them to certain scales? Have yes. you scaled them all the same? Yes. Well, they kind of naturally end up. Oh, being right. like this. So what's the scale then? <laughs> I don't mean by weight, I mean... Uh, about half. Half, is it? Yeah, oh. maybe just two, two, two to one then, yeah. Oh, good. What about the body then? Well, <laughs> I didn't think the... you had that much time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are, you, are you getting into this? <laughs> We've got no, all I night, Tom. We've got all night. I meant for the... Uh, when it's finished, I don't want to have. They're just having heads. I think it should be heads. I oh, think if this, this particular idea this week is just heads. Right. So <laughs> next week, bodies. Yeah. So you'll have to go with the same people to go yeah, to get the right to body. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to get the wrong body mixed up with it. the wrong head, do you? <laughs> We're doing arms this week. Is that what it's going to be? <laughs> Left legs on in March, and then uh, we'll see what can fit in in July. Yeah, that. <laughs> we'll have a contract for you to sign. Oh, good. <laughs> with the arm that's just been sculpted. Yeah. <laughs> Pets. <laughs> Can you sculpture this whippy? <laughs> yeah. um, you did say you could cast anything though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, you'd have to have something in like a pigeon, a whippy, or a ferret involved, surely. God, see, I told you every time we do this, there's another idea coming out. Yeah. I didn't want to bring up pigeons, whippets, and ferrets. I thought it might be a bit of a stereotype. It is you know? a bit, but. It's not my position to do that. No, it's, well, I can, so yeah. I'm, on, we, I'm honouring the subject. Uh, put one in. Yeah. <laughs> what else have we got? To be fair, a lot of people did have pigeons. Yeah, just be. Well, when I was younger, more than there is now, you don't see. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think people are allowed to keep pigeons in the back garden anymore like they used to, but uh, the people take a dim view of it, one they? they're a bit messy. But the racing pigeons, I suppose they must be still happening somewhere. Yeah, yeah I, went, I went to um, watch one of my mates play, I was trying to think where it was now. It was up near. What's it called? Was it Bale's? The Blue Barrel? No, no. Hatfield? Dunscroft Way. Broadway. Broadway, yeah. And there's a football pitch near there. And we went in to watch one of my mates play football. And then uh, I went to the bar and it's like 150 a pint or some bar. So that's where we spent most of the match. But when we came back out, there was like all this commotion. People were betting on something. Like, what are they betting on? So me and mate went to have a bet. We didn't even know what we were betting on. We'd have like five pints anyway. So we went betting on it. And we were just like, what are we betting on? And they're like, pigeon mates, it's starting in an hour. Oh, like, right. Where did they go? And they're like, France or something. I was like, what? Uh, so we were like, how does it work? They went, you basically, you, you choose the bird that you want and you back that bird. So we threw three quid on a number. And, uh, I'm going to say, the, the birds wouldn't be there, would they? They'd um, already been in France. They yeah. were already in France, yeah, and then they'd come back. Yeah. I was like, what? I um, never even knew that it even existed. What, pigeon racing? Well, yeah, in that, in that capacity. Oh, yeah, they'd have a little... I never knew how they clock, actually they? race, like, or yeah, how they, it works. They get the ring off them and they put it in the clock or something, it times it, and it, it, no, it guarantees what time they've, they've got it back. That's how they know who's won and who's lost. And If you can't get your pigeon to come in off at roof and you can't clock it in, then you... <laughs> You're struggling. That's amazing. Yeah. I remember as a kid going with my uncle to, to drop the pigeons off somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'd go and get them and then we'd 
took yeah. them all in the basket, because we were training them, took them all in the basket, went home to wait for them to come back. Uh, and, and there were like one or two that didn't make it back. And I remember saying, well, where's it gone? Is it gone? Not worth worrying about. No, that's it. They're not good. The yeah, the, the, when they're really keen on it, they, they didn't tolerate slackers. You know, <laughs> they had to go. Yeah, yeah. I suppose they I don't know if there's any. When they were betting on it, what you say yeah. when you saw. So, yeah. yeah. uh, I didn't say that, but yeah, I'm saying that. I've never had a pigeon. I've got an allotment at, at Campley Park there, and there's, I think there's just one pigeon loft there. But yeah, years ago there used to be a lot more. Now, now at the bottom of the hide fields there, there used to be quite a few pigeon lots. Yeah. Don't know if there still is. Yeah. Someone sat there off from race course once. Like, go out by yeah. an articulated lorry, basically. Yeah, yeah. Just pull them all up at once, they're all flapping out. Yeah, that yeah. yeah, looks good. It's quite amazing, really, the way it works. I remember him playing the circle to get the bearings and get the compass going. And you see them when they set up this, this, this circle together. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I've done good, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. What's next? Well, Greyhounds, whippets. Whippets. I don't know much about whippets to be fair. Yeah. What else did oh ferrets? I don't know nothing about ferrets either. But. You've let us down. <laughs> this is the worst one we've had, isn't it? <laughs> I thought you'd be more prepared, Tom. I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, about two hours. Yeah. Got your ferret stories yeah. ready. I remember walking home years and years ago in Castleford. One of the bizarre things that happened. And 11 o'clock at night, I was, I must have been out in the pubs or something, when I was about 18 or 17 or whatever. And I was just on my stagger home on a Friday night. And this bloke called me over and he says, is this yours? And he had a ferry in his hand. This is in the middle of Castleford in the, like at 11 o'clock at night. I said, well, where'd you get it from? He said, it just brought me dark street and I picked it up. A ferry, a white ferry. I says, no, it's not, it's not mine, that. It weren't mine, I mean, I've never had a ferry, so he just wandered off with it, yeah. Make it so that it's not mine, mine's, uh, mine's, mine's, <laughs> mine's Slightly better looking than that one, yeah. <laughs> Had a bit more about it, yeah. Right. <laughs> Better jawline. Yeah, yeah. That's my only ferret story. Pity, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. I don't know when I was coming here, I would have saved up a few ferret stories. Well, like canaries, do you know anything about canaries? Did you have a pit canary? With uh, the pits, I'd have canaries right up to mid 90s yeah they, they were still compulsory you had to have at least two canaries i think but uh no i never saw one used in anger oh i think using anger no it's true <laughs> 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 the uh no they did they, they, they take they only took a canary down for uh if there was uh what do you call it gas fire ah, but no it was not, not particularly not for methane it was for if there was a heating or fire going off for CO, yeah, because you can't smell CO, so the canary would keel over if it uh, got a sniff of the old CO, yeah. But I think while I was at Brodsworth, I think they took them down once. I'm sure they did. I, I didn't actually see it, but somebody said they did. Somebody also told me the reason they use canaries is because they're yellow, and then you, when they're flying around pit, you, they stand out like a little luminous jacket, but that's not true either because they don't they keep them in a cage, yeah. <laughs> But they had a little bottle to revive them if they fell and over. that was amazing, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, you can see it on old mining books, because I never saw it in action, but they're still, they're, they were still duty bound to keep canaries up to 1990 something at least. So no, we did have a budgie once at home, but that had a... Short life. Short life, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had a cat as well. The, the ferret got it. The damn ferret. <laughs> No, we had a cat as well, and uh, that, that had a long life. But that went on and on. Yeah. It's not too long. Too, a bit too long. We still got it. It's buried in back garden now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it died in that uh, elderly <laughs> death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's about it for pets, really. We had a chinchilla once, and a bit over the top. You know. A bit exotic. 
tell me about it. Crazy, and you can't catch it. You don't let it out, you never catch it again. Yeah. And now we've got his three chickens. Did they lay? Yeah, they were doing up to... Grandkids, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> up to a few weeks ago, they were... It's well, a few months ago. They get older, then it's winter, they don't lay as much, yeah, so... Yeah, we've got three chickens here. Winnie, Avril and Stormtrooper, that's the names. Yeah. Stormtrooper's the worst. Stan named Stormtrooper, yeah. Because it's a white one. Yeah. So we're laying in front of Jay right now. Uh, has he been down to see him? Did he, did he mention them? No, Colin just mentioned yesterday. Him and Stan were um, boisterous to say the least. Oh, right. We'll have this one recorded for you, Colleen. She said that she threatened to stand on at the bottom of the drive in their pants if they didn't get their clothes on they were going. Oh, she says that to me all the time. I never <laughs> took no notice. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, it can get a bit mad when they're all running riot, I suppose, yeah. Well, how many children have you got? Two got now. Two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're on YouTube, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, I'm two and done. Oh, uh, well. Sleep, how are you sleep too much to consider anymore? Yeah, overrated. I say that because, yeah, we don't get much now either, so. Is it looking like me? You're distracting me. Actually. Oh, sorry, I'm uh, yeah, it's just very difficult moving around so much. You're proving, you're proving you're quite challenged, actually. Yeah, is it? Yeah. You can prove them. You know, you can make it look 20 years younger if you want. It's the opposite problem I've got. <laughs> Is it? Oh, God. <laughs> it's the, I look 80. Never mind. But, you know, that just genuinely happens at an, an hour in, doesn't it? Yeah. Usually, like, you're 102. This is how you will look like in 10 years' time. You'll put your glasses on. Oh, dear. I will do it. Oh, let me have a quick... Yeah, I've felt like that at times, yeah, but no, there you go. That's a good sign. It's a start. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's giving you a hard time. No. Yeah, no, no, I don't think he feels he is, though. That's the problem. Oh, sorry, no. I, mean, <laughs> I, don't, like... I don't mean to. the late night session though, isn't it? Mm. It's quite interesting having one Having someone that's not interested in having a portrait done. <laughs> Maybe they're, running, they're slightly vaguely interested. I, I like it. Yeah, it's quite interesting. It's like Carl Pilkington S. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why Stan was so laid back. I've never kind of got a link, yeah. but after seeing you and your mannerisms and where right. you are, then. I mean, mannerisms. Alright. Let's try to work out if that's a compliment. Yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> he's got mannerisms in. So, what are you doing at British Gypsum? Uh, commissioning a new burner. Plays a lot of their plaster. Yeah, he will do. Uh, mm. the, we do a lot of burners in. Gypsum works. So this is a new one with problems. So there's a colleague over from Germany helping us out. Gosh. Well, he's obviously a bit better at it than, than us, I suppose. Yep. Yeah, so. so is that called an emergency in your book? 
Not really, it's just pretty normal. It's a pretty complex job, the way the gypsum rock comes from Spain. Does it? Yeah. The, well, the, it's about 20, 25 mile north of here, where this site is. A place called, even, would, would you know it? Sherbin and Elmer? No. Selby, have you heard of Selby? Yeah. Lee, it's not far from there. Yeah, they used to mine it there, I think, gypsum. But now I think that's run out, so now they import it from yeah, from Spain. Yeah. And they crush it, dry it, and then treat it and turn it into plaster, yeah. Have you ever seen raw gypsum rock? No. It's quite interesting. It, when you crack it open, it's all crystals. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I've, I always thought it would be something like limestone, yeah, yeah. but it's not. It's, it's crystal. But they have to treat it, heat it up and crush it to a certain, I don't know, how fine it is, uh, and, and then measure it and see how much moisture in it and all the rest of it. Then it goes on to make either bags of plaster or plasterboard. Well, I used a few, few tons of it a month. Yeah, you actually use British gypsum. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. There's others. There's Canals. Lafarge. Lafarge. Yeah. There are other brands available. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been. I've done a few canal ones overseas as well. Yeah. Israel, Ukraine, places like that. So, what sort of temperatures are going to get to to get that? Transfer. I don't know, the, the, we, we're putting a big flame into it and heating all these bricks up and then that gets cooled down to, to, to dry it out. I think it's, it's, I think it's, it's somewhere in 120 degrees, that's all it needs. It needs a lot of air to, mm. to, to do that. And then the, I think they do another process with the calcify it. I don't know what that, that could be, a higher temperature. That's what changes its state so it then becomes plaster, I suppose. Well, there's so many different grades of plaster when you look at mm. it, there's all different things for different purposes. That's as, that's as much as I need to know about it. Yeah. So. you just got to get the stuff hot. Hot, so you just get my flame in and hope it doesn't blow out or cause a fire or whatever disaster could happen with it. Because we've had to build our own kilns now. We've got the... You built your own? Yeah. How do you heat them up? Propane. Propane, yeah. But the problem was, you have to start low, you have to start at 50, you know, it's a big space. I mean, it's, it's, well, it's bigger than that door, those doors. Higher, probably up to the tinfoil. Yeah. And you get life-size figures in it and stuff. And that's but we have to get, you know, just start at 50 degrees, and it's the low temperatures that are really difficult to keep, a, to start off the burners creeping along at a low temperature. Right. Once they're up and running at the high temperature, then it's um, much easier. Yeah. What sort of do you use actually a, a purpose built burner? Yeah, it's all computerised. Yeah, we bought all that from a from who? Who were they? I'll have to come back to you on that. British, German, mm. uh, they were Italian, British. Mm. Yeah. Oven builders. Oh, right, that might be a different type of burners. Yeah. Eclipse do burners like that, I think, or some. I can't remember the names, but. There'd be sort of smaller range of burners than what we mm. do. So what are yours fueled by? Uh, most of them natural gas, but also diesel oil, heavy oil, any oil, anything liquid that's got a calorific value, animal fats, vegetable fats, just about anything that can burn, people will try and burn it. Yeah. Mm. Majority, like I say, natural gas. But uh, our company, they are good at burning waste fuels, as they call it. Yeah. The if future. We, <laughs> uh, well, maybe. Energy costs are very, you know, important these days. Yeah. You know, when somebody's spending a million pounds on gas and you can 
get them 1% more efficient, that's a lot of money. That's about yeah. That's 1% of a million pound, 100,000 pound. God, it's really, the margins are quite extraordinary. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't know about parking in this place, do you? I've just parked between the buildings out there. You should be all right, I think. Yeah. You should ask Dan a little bit more than I do. Have you ever been here before? Funnily enough, the last time I came in here was a, one of them real ale <laughs> tasting <laughs> jobs, yeah. That's the, the only other time I've been in this place, yeah. I went to the old college, I did some day release from work there. Yeah, it's quite nice. It looks a nice building, anyway, mm. as you're coming over the bridge there. It's getting big all the time, your head. Oh, well, you're not the first to say that. impression we're all alone. Yeah, it's all gone very quiet. Was there a fan blowing somewhere? <laughs> yeah, there was, wasn't some, it? there was something making a noise, wasn't there? Whereabouts in India were you then? All over. I was yeah. from Madras or Chennai as it is now, up to uh, Bengal. And yeah. Delhi and then up to Nepal. Like the best time was in Nepal, really. What was it? It's extraordinary. Nepal? Yeah, yeah, medieval. There's a whole casting quarter in near Kathmandu, it's a city called Patan, a third world city. And it's like there is a casting city, so you had a whole area devoted to casting. So you'd have one street that was doing waxes like this. Yeah. You'd have another street that was making the moulds out of rice husks and clay and things like that, and the whole family's doing them. Another street would be a Making casting what? street. Idols, Art or idols. Or idols, um, <coughs> it, uh, Traditionally, there would be religious yeah. um, temple sculptures, but the tourist trade was beginning to pick up when I was out there. And mm -hmm. there's been less than for that. So you're just there but to study different techniques? techniques yeah. yeah. And did you learn much? Oh, yeah, yeah, I hope not. Well, I kind of you know, from more of a historical perspective, I suppose. Yeah. Plus, the confidence to think that um, you can make fire and heat out of, as you know, out of many, many things in many, many ways. Yeah, yeah. And there were just clay ovens underground, built underground, and there were people with, you know, you saw contraptions made out of bicycles and cow pats and all that sort of stuff. You think, God, are you, are you melting metal with that? What am I worried about, you know? Yeah. What were they using this for fuel then? Coal yeah. or charcoal? Well, there was coal and coke. Oh, yeah. And then, as I say, cow pats and... Oh, they actually using cow pat cakes, yeah. yeah. Dried out on the sides of the buildings and <laughs> mix of straw, you know. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, but I, I was in Chennai Airport once, that's about it. All right. I didn't get off the plane there. Just landed there as an emergency landing. Somebody had a heart attack on the plane, so stopped there to take them off. That was my only visit to India. <laughs> what car is it, Tom, that's planned downstairs? It'll be, <laughs> it'll be a Kia Seed, I should imagine, won't it? What colour is it? Uh, Red. Grey. No, silver, yeah. Silver. I'll just, I'll double check with the security just to make sure it's fine. Do they clamp them? Not if the rubbish cars here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it should be all right then. I used to sitting still. Am I used? Yeah. Not really. No, I can. No, I don't think I do ever sit still. Does anybody? If you do, you fall asleep, don't you? <laughs> That's the trouble. Yeah. 
It's the bridge of your nose, it's the, uh, the trick, I think. Is you it? get that. All right. Unique shape to this nose. <laughs> Does it well, run in the family? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, my nose has always run, yeah. yeah. We picked our own here, yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. Unique shape, that's good. You'll know, definitely have to do your wife. I think it will fit this story quite yeah. nicely. Mm -hmm. Bring the whole family down for viewing. Get them all done. Yeah, yeah, I'll bring it down. Yeah. It'll be immortalised in Doncaster together. Yeah. Yeah, bronze, what's copper and tin? Copper and, well, there's obviously many, many types. Oh, is but, it? Um, traditionally, it's copper, lead and tin, or, and then it moved into copper, lead and zinc. Oh, right. And then it got, um, it's called LG3, it's like leaded gunmetal, it's called. And then um, the zinc, you used to get this thing called the zinc chills. So if you burnt, if, burnt, if you melted the metal too quickly, the zinc burnt out. And you would inhale it over the furnace. Yeah, poisonous. Mm. Usually are them sort of things. Yeah, and you'd end up with these horrible um, thing called the zinc chills at night. And uh, you'd be sweating and st horrible stomach cramps. Yeah. And so they stopped us, well, quite rightly, yeah, casting that. And now we use this silicon bronze, which is silicon and copper. And it flows much better, but it's much harder to work. Right. So it's like a trade-off, really. So it flows like orange juice. You never use uh, induction. I you can't afford that sort of thing. That's like oh, ridiculous. Right. You know, you've got a million, quarter million pound for a furnace. Is it? I wouldn't say. Went for a job with an induction furnace company because uh, it just looked a good, looked interesting job. I went around their factory and they showed me around it and it was quite good. They just wrap, this is the way to get a pot and wrap a copper coil around it, mm. cooled with water and then use an inverter to put a current around it and uh, yeah, it looked really good. Mm. So, but I did get a job at the end of the day so it doesn't matter. I probably thought you'd get more control with that, you know, than yeah. you would with a flame. Yeah, definitely. But they, they said they made things from like this size for people melting gold for jewellery too. Things as big as this roll for melting lead and scrap iron or whatever, yeah. Jeez. So it's cheaper to use the propane, yeah? For us, yeah, because I mean, we're not like, it's not up on, it's, we, we have a pour once a month. Uh -huh. So it's not like high use. All oh, right, so yeah. we're not gonna, it's not every know, day. Yeah. yeah, if you save it, you know, you know you're gonna. Yeah, I suppose that there'd be, uh, these were for more, making industrial components and whatever, you know, engineering stuff. Yeah, so the furnace is on all day long. Yeah. Which the induction ones generally are. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. The, so what temperature does? We melt at um, 1040 to 1120. So we, we get out of a pot at 1120. Oh, right. And then um, we usually hang around waiting for it with a parameter, waiting for it to get to the right temperature. And depending on what the thickness of the moulds are, etc., you wait your moment. And then you pour. So if you've got a thin section joining a thick section, you know it's difficult because they cool at different rates, so, so they you will have contract. To use a bit of experience. Yeah, there. you have to start judging it. Yeah. So you, the way you feed them, the way you feed the bronze in, then starts to come into play, and you have to sort of work out how to feed a thin bit to stop it contracting, etc. Yeah. I suppose these people in Nepal, India, don't use any instruments, they just yeah. do it all by eye, yeah? Yeah, very good.
but they're genuinely performing these very similar sculptures every time, you know. Right, so they're, they're, they're doing the same thing, so standard get used kind of to Buddha it. shape, yeah. which is an even, even um, casting. Probably designed for that very purpose because the sculptures are. Yeah. But it's the materials. I mean, in um, South India, we're using, for, instead of plaster and grog, we're using clay and termite sand. Termite sand? Termite sand. Termites digest this grain, grains yeah. and make them kind of coarser, I suppose, so they interlock stronger. Yeah, really good. So it was extraordinary. But in, in Nepal, you're using rice husks and clay as your binder. I suppose they'll all find a local solution yeah. to all these things. On our thousands. We've got half an hour to go. I don't think we're going to ever resolve this. <laughs> <laughs> you did your best. I did my best. Yeah. It's getting late. None of us have had our tea. Well, it's a challenge, I suppose. I did it for pride. What? Is there a better reason? <laughs> Money. Artistic, <laughs> Money. Artistic <laughs> merit would have been good. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Artistic merit is always high on my uh, list of reasons. I hope so. It is. It is well, now. You, it never used to be at all. Your choice in car is, is evident. Is. Yeah, that's uh, thrust upon me, I'm afraid. Uh, is the car still there, <laughs> unclamped? Yeah, he said yeah. they'll do it at reduced rates. You know. Four wheels and everything that's is still on it, yeah. Yeah, they clamp all four. Oh, great. I'll come to Regent with you, you can buy me a dinner and <laughs> fill me with beer for this. Once you get an angle grinder out, we'll free your car. Yeah. We'll free you the car. No problem. When you start taking photographs, it's usually a good sign. Is it? It means it's starting to look like you. Oh, great. Is it? Are, we take, are you taking photographs of me or the, uh, the sculpture? <coughs> Or is it hard to tell the difference? I don't actually know how to work these cameras and stuff. So. Uh, it looks impressive. It's what I said to this moment. It's a late night for you then. This or is this normal? Yeah, this is uh, it's beginning to be normal, which is frightening. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody wants normal. Where is it? Where do you live? Uh, Town Moor. Town Moor. All oh, right. I just imagined you live somewhere around Cantley or Bessica. No. no. I think she's, uh, she's onto the live stream now. So she can see as, as it is. Hello, Colleen. <laughs> it's nice to have someone out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for our stats. <laughs> yeah. Tell her to click like or something like that. That's <laughs> yes. what they always say. That was, that was Stan going for that. <laughs> Uh, Click subscribe, Stan. They're living in bed now, I hope. I should imagine. Oh, I tell you, it's a bit. This seat should have been more comfortable, you know. We apologise. It's a bit hard. We'll put it down in the notes. Yeah, you do. We aim to make the customer experience. Yeah, a positive one. Yes. <laughs> Oh, 
I like the fact that you've given Lawrence a slightly harder, harder time than, than some of the other ones, I think. But by moving my head around a lot, or just, <laughs> <laughs> I've just got a big ugly head. <laughs> More of a challenge. I was actually on about the dry whip, but yeah. Oh, sorry, no, no. No, he's, uh, he's doing his best, leave him. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> what if Leonardo had this problem yeah, with well. the Mona Lisa? Probably, she always had that sly grin on her face, <laughs> didn't she? Still has, as it happens. <laughs> it's twice Mona Lisa's come up today. Yeah, she's hot topic in discussion. Yeah. Doncaster's sophisticated. Yeah, yeah you can find that. <laughs> Did you say we're halfway, what, half an hour to go? Yeah. Before we're rid of this Tom's. <laughs> this model, this fella. And, uh, oh, you put them on, why do you put them in the water? Just to keep them cool or? On the what, sorry? In the, in the tub. Yeah, yeah. cool, yeah. yeah you want them there. Uh, Julius Caesar. Yeah. I got comfortable, I really should move around. Okay. First lesson in sculpture, don't stay still. Never sit still, yeah. I, I, I've heard that. <laughs> Do you find yourself, are you self-conscious? Uh, I suppose so, yeah. Are you feeling quite awkward with the attention? Yeah, it's not something I'm used to, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Self-conscious here, right. I don't think I'd like it. That's the irony of all this. I've never had my head done. Well, I'll have a go. If you want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably come out looking like that coffee cup. <laughs> Cappuccino head. I did my best, mate. Yeah. <laughs> the new style. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh... All right. Don't worry. No, I just wondering. Does the back like... does the back of the head matter? Yeah. Oh, well, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Not in a painting, but. Yeah, I suppose so. For some reason I had in, in my mind that these heads would be stuck against something so you wouldn't see the back of the heads. They are a thorough, proper sculptor. You know when you get, you see those art programs and you go, oh, you've been buying it, even around the back is, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, you know. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them that when people ask me about this experience. He even sculpted the back of my head. Yeah. One of my worst features, the back of my head. Where Just he, as I was offering to make. He took the trouble to people. get round there <laughs> and do something about it. You've definitely got some Julius Caesar about you. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. How did he end up? In a salad. <laughs> did I? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't all his mates turn on him? Yeah. <laughs> you know your history then? Yeah, it's probably about the, as much as it, as far as it goes. Not too brute and all that. Got in Latin as well, it's the first time for everything. Yeah, yeah. You just bend forward, just to make sure you get this skull shrink. Yeah, get the top of the head right. Yeah. What do you mean when you were in the lift? Yeah. Were you watching this on your phone? I have to check, yeah. Jesus Christ, it's like 
big film around you. Yeah, definitely do that. We need some um, female stories. Yeah, she was the one. You say she was a nurse as well, pit nurse? No, she wasn't a pit nurse, no, she was, she was a nurse in hospital. Miner's daughter. Miner's daughter, yeah. And granddaughter as well, I suppose. Born in a pit house, same as me. Alluded to going to a council house. So is that what brought you together when you first met? Uh, what the fact that we were both born in pit houses? Yeah, <laughs> we used to go to born in pit house conventions. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> have opened up on a number of cities as we've developed. We don't have to go too much. <laughs> Just like I've got to open them all up. Now. They start well, off quite. I suppose when you first take your glasses off, you're squinting everywhere, yeah. then gradually you start seeing a bit more of the world and you start to think, do I need glasses? You know. <laughs> and you know, walk into the broom cupboard and think, oh, I do, yeah. <laughs> What time does this place close then? Reception and everything? It all <coughs> starts shutting down from about seven ish. Reception will start to close. Depends mm -hmm. what, what's been on. We've had the parents even tonight as well, so um, I think reception shut around seven ish and then the building shuts for nine, so the security will start doing the last sweep and then uh, we get locked in at nine o'clock. Marvellous. I've got one microwave meal in the fridge, you know, so we can share that. Uh, yeah, I've got a better invite up to the region. <laughs> <laughs> good food, then. Uh, uh, that's, uh, I, I think I have eaten there once years ago. Great Sunday lunches, they do like a sharing platter. Oh, yeah. Is it still, uh, what's, the, what's the name of the bar they've got there? It's got Beatles theme. The Beatles, it? yeah, Abbey Road bar. Is that what it's called? I know it's something to do with the Beatles. Yeah, you know, Beatles stayed there, mm. you know. Do they stay there or perform there? No, they stayed there. They have performed, uh, well, it's not there now, I suppose, the, uh, the old th cinema that didn't knock down, that burnt down in Doncaster. <laughs> Contentious, I hear. Well. Everything seems to burn down eventually. Uh, Doncaster Rovers burnt down. Yeah, it's a car park now, but uh, Rolling Stones appeared there as well. Good Lord. In fact, my wife went to see them. Really? Yeah. yeah. She'll be able to tell you all about it when she comes down. <laughs> I think she was only about 12 or something. But include teeth then in this scope? <coughs> not, not with you, no. Oh, right. You're not that good. Good. I had a filling done on uh, Tuesday, I think. Really? Yeah. Or oh, yesterday. Oh, it must have... <laughs> <laughs> must be some other day then. <laughs> I can't remember when it was. Maybe last Friday. Yeah, 51 quid just for a little bit of a filling. You're not even showing it on sculpture. Sorry about that, let's just see if I can get inside there. Yeah.
Were you just waiting for me to arrive here? Yeah. Was like, oh, right. No, well, I'm very grateful. Oh, no, well, nothing would have happened. When did the last one go then? Three. Three. Oh, right, you've been waiting a while. Oh, because yeah. this fella... The two at five. ...had to go for his... Yeah. He got called away. Yeah. <coughs> three sittings, one at ten till um, twelve. One till three and five to seven. And this was about what six to fifteen to eight fifteen maybe? Something like that, yeah. Well, do you have to stick to that time or Yeah, I don't I think it's a good challenge to get it done in two hours. It's yeah. not fair on you. And it's it's just to get in in, in a rest between them. Believe it or not, it's quite exhausting. Oh, I'm sure it is. You've been doing a lot of twitching around and moving there. So <laughs> <laughs> I said twitching in an artistic yeah, way, yeah, of course. Yeah. Artistic uh, twitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> You're doing a good job. A fervour of creativity. Yeah, that's the, the words I was looking for, but it came out wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose you, you could go on forever, couldn't you? Looking for the old perfection and... Yeah. yeah. And I really, I think you get the essence quite quickly. I mean, I found out. I mean, I didn't think I could do it, to be honest, when I started it. It was a bit of a challenge. Because usually, I mean, I take weeks to do it. If you did this on lower stuff seafront, you'd make a packet on it. Well, we're doing it on the, in the summer. We're doing it in Frenchgate. We're doing you? a session in Frenchgate during, yeah. What? Can't Pass it by, just sit there? No, I've got to find someone. Pay one pound fifty and we'll do you a bit of a... <laughs> Yeah. I suppose, yeah. Well, we've got to get the message out there, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, people yeah. Got to, you know, people like you have never heard of this. Until no, now. it was news to me. So, really, we're getting one person every 24 hours for the time Start. I'm here. Well, we'll spread the news. Not, not when arts, as far as art, when art's concerned, I can suffer, I can not suffer. <laughs> suffer from my art, yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah. Getting pins and needles, but uh, sticking with it. Good man. It's for mining. Yes, so the, uh, yeah, the history of mining. I've still got my tool bag from the pit. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I've got any memento. Yeah, I'm just remember I've got that still in the chair. My, my belt I used to have. Yeah. Did your electrical skills, are they, were they transferable or were they quite unique? And uh, Mine was a, it had its own sort of electric systems. That, but No, you could transfer most of it, yeah. So you were never actually tempted to go and work, in a sense, as a riffer or a... As a, in, the, in the actual mine itself, in the no, no, uh, you were never I was, uh, I always wanted to do an apprenticeship, so yeah, I, I chose electrical. You could choose electrical or mechanical, but I chose electrical. Did the tests required and was accepted, and yeah, at the time, uh, I've been going back a long years now, a lot of years, but yeah, if you're an electrician underground, you could generally get a lot of overtime. All oh, right, which is what. When you've got a you know a, a young family and a big mortgage, that's what you want. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, work a lot of long hours and weekends and all the rest of it. Gosh. But yeah, yeah think about the money. Yeah. Well, you're very handsome in this. Just in this? Yeah. If I had a bit more time, I'd get more realistic. <laughs> oh, uh, we've been, stop now then. <laughs> Leave it while we're all ahead. Uh, 
trick is when you've gone, I put yeah. it in the bath. Yeah, I boil it up a bit. Ten S minutes later. Stick a few warts on it, yeah. yeah. But if it reminds you of you, I'm usually quite thrilled. All you do at this point is see what is wrong. I suppose it doesn't really matter if you've got hair or not hair with these sort of sculptures, does well, it? Well, the hair is a nightmare. I was yeah, really well, relieved when I saw you come I've in. I've done you a favour then, aren't yeah, I, turning yeah. up like this? Put your glasses off as well. Yeah. Took half an hour off the job. <laughs> <laughs> you would mould the glasses on? Yeah. Would you? Do you do that? I'd have to try and... Well, yeah. the problem is, you have to try and be in... You know, put bits of glasses in and sort of hints of it in... Because yeah. the whole frame looks really strange in a sculpture. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work at all. I would like to try one actually once, one day. So but it's late. The temptation is just to make some out of wire and stick <laughs> them on afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a naughty schoolboy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, me? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, well, this first day I've been back to school for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Back of the neck, what? I'm always light on the back. Oh, yeah, yeah, get some neck stuck on. You'd make a great tutor. So with five minutes left, how would you sum up your mining career? Uh, <laughs> my sum of my mining career. Uh, I always quite enjoyed it, really. Uh, as much as you can enjoy anything. As much as you can enjoy going <laughs> to work, getting up at half past four in the morning. And, Listening to Pit Buzz ago and trying to get there before it goes off. Uh, but uh, yeah, in general, I didn't. Once I, once you get down the the mine, you don't think about anything. I just think about the job really. Yeah. You can. Uh, have you been down a mine then, Danny? No, I tried to convince Nick that she wanted to go to the Cap House, Cap house yeah. for, for a day out. Uh, you and should. said, you, you go down like this mine, and she was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Laura said the pleasure of meeting Nick as well, so she... Uh, All right, you should go. I think I'll probably go one day and take a stand down, I was kids when they're a bit older. I've been once before, funny enough. Let us know when you're going, you Tech Jay. <laughs> I would, yeah. Yeah, it's worth doing. Just have a look. It's amazing. Have you been down, Lawrence? Yeah. yeah. I've done my research. Good man. Yeah, but the, I got the impression the such as me going down, they asked, you, you, you probably let it, they probably notice that you've worked down the pit before. And them guides that are doing it, they don't want you to keep butting in and, well, we didn't do it like that, you know, shut up, you. you know? <laughs> <Talk>. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think we're, they might get a bit irritated by us. Yeah, it's a good thing that it's still there, I suppose, yeah. to, to go and have a look. But that's quite a shallow mine, isn't it? It's, uh, not very, you don't go down very far. I don't know. Well, the, the thing is, when, when this first started, I, I knew about mining, obviously, from the areas that I've lived. Yeah. But I think we've learned far more in the last couple of months, haven't we, Lawrence, about, mm -hmm. about the whole of the mining community and process. And yes. Lawrence has got some amazing words on his list. Oh, yeah, we've got his mining language. Mining language? <laughs> <laughs> you know, things like the gob. Oh, the gob, yeah. Uh, the gob, the uh, loader gate, tailgate. Yeah, the, the, the name of the, uh, the pants. Backer. Backers, or was it? The name of the what? The <laughs> different areas have different sorts of slang words for things, I think. Uh, Dudley. Yeah. There's a word. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah have you ever heard it's of Dimple Whiskey? A what, a what whiskey? Dimple Whiskey. I've heard of Dimple whiskey, yeah, but, but I've seen there's a whiskey called Dimple, but what to do with mine? I don't know. <laughs> what, what was that referring to? All sorts. Keith All sorts attempt to seduce a young lady using what? his best Dimple whiskey. Oh right. Oh well, uh, I don't know. I never tried that. Dimple whiskey. Yeah, that don't make a girl swoon. What will? Yeah. <laughs> There's only whiskey in it, I'll just show you the bottle. That's what I used to have, some dimple whiskey, you know. Uh, yeah, all sorts of strange words, weren't there? Oh, I'll tell you, and things you'll never see now, like uh, people chewing backy and stuff like that. Which is a... Uh, has that, that mentioned that? Chewing tobacco? Almost everyone. Mm. Some, some positive experiences, some negative experiences. I never chewed it, but... You got, I think you've got to take some doing to get used to it, but once it's like cigarettes, once they're used to it, then they're like anything else, they're hooked on it, I suppose. I can't it's, imagine that one's first. It's quite messy, you know. You can't swallow it, you, you spit it all around here, all over the place, you know. Yeah, the wax. Well, yeah, you can't swallow that either, I suppose. Yeah. Snuff, you know, you don't see people taking snuff anymore. We've got lots of snuff. Have you? You try some snuff? Mm -hmm. we went to, funny enough, we went to the dog races. Oh, at Stainforth there? Yeah. No, 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 in Yarmouth. In Yarmouth? Oh, it was right. our Christmas treat to the workers, as it were. And we took your snuff and we sniffed snuff and bet on the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the good life, I eh? I lost a lot of money that night. Yeah, you will do. <laughs> Let me snuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cloudy judgment snuff. Yeah. What we were waiting for is waiting for the which dog did a poo and bet on it. Oh, yeah. If they did it, if it's they did yeah. That's how you do it, is it? I never really. Well, it didn't work for me. No. I... It's two hours on. Okay, bloody hell. No, we can't do any more then. That's it, is it? Sorry about that. Well. I know you want to stay longer. Well, I'm getting used to it now. I've lost all feeling in my backside, so it doesn't matter anymore. Another hour won't hurt. Yeah. Shall I get up? Yeah, you? yeah. You're, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. How do I look? Whew. I'm not as happy as I thought I might be, <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> I'll give you a smile. There you go. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it'll do. Yeah, it's very good. Thank you. Do you see yourself? You usually see a dad. You yeah, brother, yeah, you, you can see, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. I suppose it's kind of, you know, oh, obviously you don't stick any eyes in or anything like that. No, well, I could do some of that. That's all right. No. <laughs> That's an extra five minutes. Is it? That was it, mate. Well, not so bad, is it? Ah, a bit more, That's a bit more Julius Caesar now, because they always had an eye in, I think, didn't they? I'll yeah, you, well, I'll anyway. Give you a twinkle in your eye, anyway. Oh, lovely. Well, uh, I hope yeah, it all uh, works out it. for you. Yeah. Stay there. Stop, stop doing it. <laughs> You'll have your portrait taken, yeah. This is now a collaboration. Oh, right. That was actually a good idea, that. A portrait of what? Of me? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Right. There you go. You can put your glasses on. Oh, it's a good, good idea. <laughs> 
The sculpture could see better than me. <laughs> It's all right, right, yeah. yeah. It's a bit bluer than that, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you only started smiling the last five minutes. You can't expect it all to be more than brown, huh? I know. I'll lose all blood to my legs, you know. It was... <laughs> yeah, I'll do the crow's foot going that way. That'll cheer you up. Crow, uh, <laughs> You haven't got much. Have I not? Actually. No, You're no. quite well, you know, tight skinned, as they say. Oh, right, Are yeah. you a sportsman? Uh, no, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was. But I don't think we're going to get many hits on YouTube with you, you know. Uh, oh dear. Well, it might be the beginning of a whole new comedy act. Right. But, uh, yeah. Sorry, I just keep going while you're trying to leave. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. You, can, well, you can go, so I won't stop. It just follows you. Yeah. yeah. So you I'll follow you around. Your eyes will follow you around the room. Oh, lovely. Yeah. That it's it? great. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It's been brilliant. Brilliant. Well, at short notice. <laughs>